Most of us were taught that the famous explorer Christopher Columbus was the one who discovered America. Columbus Day, as we know it, honors his daring journey across the vast Atlantic in 1492, which marked the beginning of the age of exploration and European colonization in the New World. We also learned that the first black people to arrive in the Americas were enslaved Africans who were brought there as slaves. A rising quantity of data, however, challenges this widely accepted historical account. The story of Christopher Columbus as the daring adventurer who discovered the Americas is deeply established in our cultural memory. Despite this, historical evidence reveals that Columbus was not the first non-native American to set foot in the Americas. So, who was the first, if not Columbus? Before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe to our channel to remain up to date on our fascinating investigation of black history. In the late 15th century, Europe was engulfed in an exploration frenzy fueled by the desire to explore new trade routes to the east as well as the pursuit of wealth and power. Several European nations were pushed by this ambitious endeavor. The current routes to Asia were both long and dangerous, driving explorers to seek alternate routes to the east's lucrative resources. Among these explorers was Christopher Columbus, an Italian adventurer who dreamed of sailing westward across the Atlantic to reach Asia. Columbus believed that the Earth was smaller than popularly believed due to his own geographical knowledge and theories advanced by intellectuals. He was sure that by sailing west, he might circumvent the conventional trade routes and reach Asia's eastern coast strait. This unwavering search of a direct path to Asia eventually brought him to the Americas. On October 12, 1492, after a rigorous and difficult voyage, Columbus and his crew discovered land, which we now know to be one of the Bahamas Islands. This historic event marked the first direct contact between Europe and the Americas. As a result, he became known as the person who discovered the New World of the Americas. Columbus Day is observed on the second Monday of October each year. Nonetheless, this viewpoint is diametrically opposed to reality. In reality, Columbus was one of the later explorers to reach America, as Africans had already explored the continent centuries before his mission. The crux of this argument is that, contrary to popular assumption, the presence of black people in America did not begin with slavery. Some people believe that due of perceived IQ and technological constraints, Africans could not have discovered America before Columbus. This viewpoint is founded on long-standing misconceptions and prejudices that have sought to discredit African civilization's achievements and potential. The supposed lack of current shipbuilding technology is one frequently mentioned explanation for this view. Detractors claim that African societies lacked the expertise and resources needed to build transatlantic capable ships. This notion ignores the extensive maritime traditions found in numerous African regions, including excellent shipbuilding capabilities demonstrated by societies such as the Phoenicians and Carthaginians, who had substantial African influences. Numerous successful modern experiments have shown that ancient African boats, even without oars or sails, could span large oceans in a couple of weeks. The Portuguese contacts with African boats known as dugout canoes in the 15th century, for example, provide vital insights into the potential of African maritime technology. Pacheco Pereira, a Portuguese explorer who sailed along West Africa's coast in the 15th century, characterized these enormous boats as vessels capable of carrying up to 80 men. Another factor used to support the assumption is the alleged lack of navigational and astronomical knowledge among African civilizations. According to others, Africans were incapable of precisely charting their paths using celestial navigation methods or building advanced navigational tools. This position, however, ignores evidence of African tribes' understanding of celestial entities, such as the Dogon people's intricate grasp of the Sirius star system. Furthermore, this viewpoint ignores the extensive trade networks that link distinct African tribes across enormous distances, implying their navigating abilities. In truth, evidence suggests that West Africans arrived in the Americas at least 180 years before Christopher Columbus. Let me specifically introduce you to Mansur Abu Bakr II, king of the ancient Mali Empire in West Africa. He reigned from 1307 to 1311 CE and was also known as Mansoku. 
Under Abu Bakr's tenure, the Mali Empire was at its most powerful and prosperous. It ruled over vast territory that included modern-day Mali, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Niger, and parts of Mauritania, and drew enormous wealth through gold and salt trade, cementing its status as one of the most successful empires of the time. Mansa Abu Bakr II set out to explore the unknown waters of the Atlantic Ocean, driven by a hunger for knowledge and exploration. In 1311, he dispatched a troop of his men on 200 ships, outfitted with enough rations to last them for years, to explore the ocean's farthest reaches. He told them not to return until they discovered what is beyond the Atlantic Ocean. According to reports, only one ship returned. When asked about the events, the captain stated that they had traveled for a long time and that in the huge sea, a mighty river with a powerful current arose. The remaining vessels proceeded on, but when they arrived at their destination, they failed to return, disappearing totally. As for me, I approached it once but did not enter the water. In return, Abu Bakr gathered even more ships. He supplied them with food, water, cattle, gold, and other requirements. He abdicated the crown to his brother, Mansa Musa, and headed out to discover himself. They did not appear to return. The book Africa and the Discovery of America by Leo Wiener discusses data that implies Africans may have been in the Americas before Christopher Columbus. This claim is supported by information drawn from Columbus' own writings. In his diary, Columbus recorded Native American accounts of black-skinned people arriving from the southeast in boats, trading gold-tipped spears. These spearheads were referred to as guanin by Native Americans, a phrase that equates to gold in the Mandinka language, which was spoken in the Mali Empire. Columbus repeatedly emphasized the availability of gold and the natives' usage of gold jewelry, which corresponded to the great value and cultural significance of gold in West Africa during Columbus' era. The African kingdoms of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai became famous for their gold manufacture and trade systems. The rulers and higher classes of ancient African nations decked themselves with ornate gold jewelry as a symbol of their power, wealth, and social standing. Columbus was struck by the prevalence of gold ornaments worn by individuals when he met the aboriginal inhabitants of the Americas. Within these communities, he noted the use of gold nose rings, earrings, pendants, and several other types of jewelry. They maintained that the presence of matching gold embellishments suggested a possible commerce network or cultural exchange between African and indigenous American cultures prior to Columbus' arrival. Upon his arrival in America, Columbus also reported seeing structures like mosques. It's worth noting that people from the Mali Kingdom were Muslims, which raises the potential that they built mosques during their stay there. Although Christopher Columbus' reports provide interesting views, they are not the only evidence suggesting Africans may have reached the Americas prior to his expeditions. One of the most convincing pieces of evidence comes from the Olmec culture. The Olmec civilization, which flourished in what is now Mexico around 1200 BC, is significant when it comes to understanding the early cultures of the Americas. The Olmecs conferred an immense heritage on history through a plethora of artistic and architectural relics. Among these fascinating remains is the source of discussion about pre-Columbian African influence in the Americas. The massive heads are the most famous and perplexing antiquities associated with the Olmec civilization. These massive stone sculptures depict human faces and are noteworthy for their astounding size, ranging from around 5 to 11 feet in height and weighing several tons. The massive heads include elaborate details and are considered to represent Olmec monarchs or people of high status. Archaeologist Matthew Sterling discovered the first enormous head in Trace Supports in 1938. Following that, 16 more heads were discovered, including one from Loventa, another from Trey Sapotes, four from Loventa, and ten from San Lorenzo. While studying these enormous skulls, some observers have noticed specific morphological characteristics that resemble African qualities. These parallels include prominent noses, prominent lips, unusual face shapes, and what some believe to be African-like facial emotions. Such data imply that people of African heritage may have lived in the Americas many centuries before Columbus' arrival. These characteristics cannot be ignored casually or attributed merely to random occurrences. 
Nonetheless, seeing African resemblances in ancient artifacts or historical settings frequently encounters a systematic bias that minimizes Africa's involvement in influencing global history. African societies have frequently been pushed to the margins and overshadowed by Eurocentric narratives, despite their cultural richness and achievements. This marginalization has perpetuated a flawed historical perspective that fails to recognize the interconnected nature and contributions of African communities to world civilizations. Despite European researchers' efforts to twist reality and rewrite history, evidence consistently points to an early African influence preceding Columbus' journey. Exploration of the Americas' early religious traditions uncovers fascinating links between certain aspects of African and indigenous beliefs. These similarities suggest that Africans had an impact on the Americas long before Columbus arrived. One striking parallel is the notion of animism, which is common in both African and indigenous American spiritual traditions. Animism is the belief that natural components such as trees, rivers, and animals contain intrinsic spirits or souls. This viewpoint emphasizes the interconnectedness of all living entities and the spiritual significance of the environment. Similar convictions and rituals can be found in numerous African nations and indigenous groups throughout the Americas, showing a shared sense of the spiritual universe. Another parallel is the regard shown to ancestors and the practice of ancestral veneration. African religions usually highlight the importance of maintaining contact with deceased ancestors in order to obtain their advice and protection. Similarly, many indigenous American tribes maintain strong ancestral practices, distinguished by rites and ceremonies aimed to honor and engage with their forefathers. This similar importance in honoring ancestors suggests the likelihood of cultural exchanges and influences between African and indigenous American societies. Clearly, all indications point to the possibility of Africans visiting the Americas prior to Columbus. The evidence, which is frequently ignored or rejected, suggests that Africans could have existed in the Americas. This is based on similarities between early American and African religions, Christopher Columbus' personal recollections, and the discovery of Olmec skulls with striking resemblances to African facial characteristics. These intriguing correspondences suggest cultural exchanges and influences. It is critical to challenge dominant Eurocentric narratives that have traditionally downplayed African contributions and affected our understanding of history. The possibility of African influence in the Americas contradicts the incorrect narrative that Europe alone promoted civilization and reduces Africa's importance. The idea that Africa was devoid of civilization until European invaders arrived is a distorted and harmful depiction of African history. The evidence for early African interactions with the Americas conclusively proves that Africa had its own prosperous and sophisticated civilizations long before European involvement. Ancient African societies, such as the Egyptian, Nubian, and Aksumite kingdoms, served as intellectual and cultural hotspots. These civilizations created intricate governmental frameworks, built gigantic structures, and made substantial contributions to fields such as mathematics, architecture, and medicine. Their vibrant trading networks expanded beyond Africa, building links with far-flung areas of the globe. Furthermore, the medieval empires of Songhai, Ghana, Mali, and Benin were capable of making trips to the Americas. The idea that Africa was devoid of civilization until European invaders arrived is a distorted and harmful depiction of African history. The evidence for early African interactions with the Americas conclusively proves that Africa had its own prosperous and sophisticated civilizations long before European involvement. Ancient African societies, such as the Egyptian, Nubian, and Aksumite kingdoms, served as intellectual and cultural hotspots. These civilizations created intricate governmental frameworks, built gigantic structures, and made substantial contributions to fields such as mathematics, architecture, and medicine. Their vibrant trading networks expanded beyond Africa, building links with far-flung areas of the globe. Furthermore, the medieval empires of Songhai, Ghana, Mali, and Benin were capable of making trips to the Americas. These empires were known for their sophisticated trading networks and marine prowess, which enabled them to span enormous swaths of the Atlantic Ocean. The Songhai Empire, 
for example, was lauded for its control over trans-Saharan trade routes. This complicated system permitted the exchange of commodities across large distances, demonstrating their understanding of long-distance trade and travel. Similarly, during Mansa Musa's reign, the Mali Empire established vast trading links with North Africa, the Middle East, and Europe, demonstrating their expertise in extensive marine trade. Ghana, known for its vast wealth and influence over the gold trade, had access to both the Sahara Desert and the Atlantic Ocean. This strategic posture enabled them to develop marine knowledge, potentially allowing them to explore and communicate with the Americas. All indicators point to Africans being sophisticated enough to embark on journeys of discovery beyond their own coasts. According to historical data, these voyages resulted in extraordinary revelations. Given the abundance of evidence, it's puzzling why so little is known about African exploration of the Americas. The root of the problem is that history has been written mostly from a Eurocentric perspective. We have been led to believe that great successes were not accomplished by black people, despite the fact that black people have accomplished remarkable feats since the beginning of time. The absence of these historical tales in school curricula raises concerns. Why isn't this knowledge taught in schools? Why have these records not made it into the history books used in schools? I ask you to leave your thoughts in the comments box below the video. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our material to raise awareness of the truths of black accomplishments and to give various perspectives a voice. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.